A new study says evolution may be a little bit more complicated than previously thought. Two million year old fossils were discovered in Johannesburg in 2008. Over 10 years later, researchers say the fossils are a species very closely related to the human race. The new species walks on two feet like humans do, but its hands suggest that it also spent a lot of time climbing trees. So joining us now is the co-author of this new study, Jerry De Silva. Thank you so much for joining us, Jerry. So I saw all these headlines declaring this sort of the missing link. It's not quite that, but how does this discovery help us understand our own evolution? Sure. Humans have wondered where they come from for a long time. And we have reconstructed the story of human evolution using genetics, comparing our DNA to our closest living relatives, chimpanzees, and by studying fossils. And we literally have thousands of fossils of early human ancestors and extinct relatives that help us piece together how humans evolved. But as we discover new fossils, and especially these new discoveries, it it, it appears as though the story was a little more complicated. So, so Jerry, uh, Jerry, uh, uh, I was fascinated as a little kid um, when just a couple of years, uh, when I was still, you know, under 10 years old, the bones of Af uh, Australopithecus afarensis, and I trained myself as a little kid to be able to say that over and over again, Australopithecus afarensis lucy was discovered because I was absolutely fascinated. And I used to spend hours at the museum here in New York City looking at those bones and trying to understand how we went from lucy to us. And the way it was taught in schools back then was, there was Lucy, and then there was a sort of series of footsteps, and ultimately, through those footsteps, um, the current humans uh, appeared. It appears now that it's not really true, right? There was Lucy, or a pre-human, and from Lucy sprang all these different branches, ultimately leading to Homo sapien. That's right, yeah. Lucy is wonderful. Lucy is this marvelous benchmark for us as scientists and for the public absorbing this information. But we now understand that, that that coffee cup version of human evolution of a chimpanzee slowly turning into a human with Lucy in between, sort of at a halfway point, is, is much more complicated. It wasn't that simple, although that icon still is with us. Like you said, there were many different branches on the human family tree, many different experiments that happened over our evolutionary history. And the new discovery that was made outside of Johannesburg, like you said, about an hour outside of Johannesburg in the cradle of humankind in South Africa, is a version of Lucy. It's an Australopithecus, like Lucy is, but it's an Australopithecus sediba. It's a different kind of Australopithecus. So it turns out that there were these different flavors, different kinds of Australopithecus who were walking differently, climbing trees with different amounts of uh, frequency, eating different things, uh, living in very different kinds of ways throughout Africa. And we as scientists are trying to piece together the story of who's most closely related to our own lineage, our own branch of that amazingly diverse tree, the branch that leads to Homo sapiens. So that's why this fossil, this species, is not a missing link. It's a missing link, but not, not to us. That, maybe missing not link to, us. to something else. Mm -hmm. But what do we know about how this species lived? Yeah, so we uh, have... Uh, Put together a series of papers that helps understand head to toe this particular creature. It was discovered 10 years ago by Lee Berger, who's a paleoanthropologist in South Africa. And the first fossil was a collarbone, I actually have it here, it was a collarbone or a replica, was discovered by his nine year old son, which is wonderfully inspiring to middle schoolers and elementary school kids that you can go out and find these fossils yourself if you happen to be in the right place at the right time. But we know head to toe that this is a different combination of anatomies from, say, Lucy or any other animal we'd ever seen. It walked in a peculiar way. We were able to piece that together from the, the bones of the foot and the knee and the pelvis. The hand, like was mentioned earlier, is very, very human-like, though it has these curved fingers that would have been useful for grasping onto mom as a baby or maybe even climbing trees uh, as, as an adult getting up into the trees for the safety of the trees at night. The brain is about the size of a chimpanzee's brain, but it appears to be structured uh, more like yours and mine. The teeth are more like yours and mine. The, the shape of the skull is in some ways uh, human-like. So it has this wonderful mosaic of anatomies that are similar in certain ways to humans, similar in certain ways to Lucy, certainly uh, similar in certain ways to uh, living apes, but then entirely unique because this was its own animal.
Wow, we're looking at uh, yeah. like a sort of artist rendering of it right now, and it's just it's like it's just so stunning to look at. It, it really is, and when you and when you sort of try to put into your mind that there were these different competing sets of pre or proto humans, yeah. uh, and the question, of course, is what happened? What to them? happened? I, I I'd like to believe that the ones who were vegetarians are the ones who perhaps did not. <laughs> I like to tease Anne Marie. <laughs> yeah, because protein. We need protein to Whatever. our brains. Our brains got. Big Bigger, and right? that is why right, right, doctor? <laughs> your last name is not De Silva. <laughs> right. Exactly. He's the expert in this area. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, thank you so much. Really, really fascinating stuff. It just makes, I think, anybody who is interested in the origins of, of humanity um, really take another glance at that. Thank you. You're welcome.